Good afternoon, everyone. I'd like to extend a very warm welcome to all of you and welcome you to the sixth edition of the Global Art and Design Education Expo. We've been organizing this event for many years. My name is Amit. I'm part of Sista Events. And uh, we're really happy to bring this event for the first time to Ahmedabad. I think Ahmedabad is really close to my heart. You know, the people here are so warm. The food here is so tasty. <laughs> And uh, it's a very vibrant city, you know, a, a city that's always changing, always on the move. And, you know, I'm so happy to see so many nice, bright faces here today. We're going to be starting the first session of the day. And I'm delighted to welcome Pallavi Bhatnagar from SCAD. And she's going to be hosting a fantastic session for you guys here today. How to present your portfolio like a pro, right? So in the world of design, your portfolio is something which is critically important. And the way you present your portfolio can be your make or break deal. It can determine whether you get into a good art school. Going forward, it can determine the kind of jobs that you land, the kind of career breaks that you make. And therefore, you know, getting familiar with this topic, learning about it, I think makes, uh, it's going to add a lot of value to everyone right here. So Pallavi actually is a graduate from SCAD, so she's, uh, you know, experienced, uh, you know, a world-class education at SCAD. SCAD, as you know, is one of the leading art and design schools in, in the U.S. I would arguably say one of the best schools in the globe in the field of art and design. And Pallavi's got experience in the field of retail, merchandising, fashion, and luxury. She's worked with different brands. Uh, she's got a lot of experience. and. You know, as I mentioned, she's done her, her course at SCAD as well. She's currently based in Atlanta. And uh, you know, I'm so happy that she made the effort to come here to India. And uh, you know, she's going to be coming with us. We're taking the same event to Hyderabad and Delhi. So we're starting off in, in Ahmedabad. And uh, you know, I don't want to keep this on, keep saying stuff like this. I'd rather get, let the session get started. So thanks, Pallavi. Over to you. Thank you so much. Hi everyone, can y'all hear me? Yes. Awesome. So th thank you so much for you know introducing me. And you heard it. I'm you know a SCAD grad. I've graduated from Savannah College of Art and Design. And we'll talk about SCAD at my booth right after this presentation. But today what I'm gonna discuss about in this session is primarily on to how you would present your portfolio like a pro. I'll still wait for our students to join in. Okay, so just, you know, me getting to know the, the students. So how many of us are applying for an undergraduate degree? All right, so we do have those. And others are graduates for masters? Yeah. Yeah? Okay, awesome. I want to start by saying it depends. Now, what depends? Your portfolio depends. Your portfolio depends from whether you're applying for a master's degree or an undergraduate degree. If you're applying for a BFA in graphic design or industrial design. So whatever or wherever you upload your portfolio or you submit your portfolio, it depends on the level of education you're applying for, on the program you're applying for, and also the degree level. Now, what is a portfolio? Can anybody answer that? And any answer, it can be one word, two words, anything. Just give me a keyword. Collection of best works. That's good, collection of best works. Anything else? Any add-ons? No, Isha, yes, yeah. Make sure to display your skills. Absolutely, showing your skill set, right? So a portfolio is a compilation of your best works in a professional manner. Now, when you're uploading your portfolio, we don't want to see no background hands or shadows or something else, your cat playing around because if you're uploading a photo of your painting, we don't want to see a cat, we don't want to see a dog. We want to see your work. We want you to display your work, your best work, in a professional manner. And it has to have a wow factor. Now, what is a wow factor? It's something that differentiates you from you. It's, some, it's something that differentiates you from me. That wow factor, nobody can decide for you. It's something that you have to explore for yourself. And you'll know it once you start building your portfolio, 
right? Now there are various categories of a portfolio. It necessarily, of course, has to do with design, but design is everywhere. Think about writing. Now, a student came to me and so at SCAD, we, for undergraduate level programs, students can compile their best works from any genre, right? So they go like, we're really good at academic writing and we want to do performing arts. What do we do? I said, compile that in a portfolio. Even your academic writing, even your dramatic writing for that matter, can be compiled in together for a portfolio. It necessarily, sure, has to do with design, but design is always everywhere. It's in writing, it's in, it's in graphic design, it's in fashion, it's in industrial design, architecture, right? So it has to do with anything and everything that involves design. Now while constructing your portfolio, these are some key points that I really want you to focus on. Categorize your work. Now you've done 15 projects, but, but you kind of see that, oh my God, that's my best project and I should put that first. That's my second best, I should put that second. But sometimes while doing or compiling portfolios, we tend to forget that we have to have a chronology. We have to know, and there should be a story, you know, so it should flow from point A to point B to point C. So we need to categorize our works according to those bits and pieces. Now, second point being process and sketches. A lot of students, when they submit their final project or their final product they show us, they tend to forget to add the process that went behind it. Because think about it this way, right? When I was a student, um, we had semesters, those were like six months long, right? So we used to do so many, you know, so many processes and explorations to be able to come to one final project or one final product that we would just, I mean, I did that. I uploaded, okay, for instance, if I'm designing a bag, right? I would just put a, or upload a photo of that bag. I would tend to forget that what processes went behind to make that bag, what market I'm catering to, what research I put in to make that bag, okay, what might sell in India, might not sell in the US. So what are my demographics? What or who my target audience is? What is my theme? What other explorations did I do to come to that conclusion of making that bag, right? So we want to see those processes, those explorations that you do in order to come to that final product. Now here are a few examples of you know, motion graphics, animation, and other skills that students tend to show in their portfolio but each portfolio is different in its own way. It's unique from student to student. There's no set rubric that you have to follow. You just find your own factor, your own element that you would want to think about while presenting and compiling your portfolio. Now, for example, a student like me, when I was a student, I would, um, you know, try and compile my greatest works for a design, uh, fashion design portfolio. So I would make sure that the lighting is correct. The background is not too loud where my product might, you know, just be camouflaged. I want to make sure these small bits and pieces that my pro portfolio and my product looks industry ready. Because sometimes what your product looks in real, na real life might not be shown as the same way in a photo. So make sure when you're taking photos, it's in that level of um, quality where you can actually see what's, what it's like in real life. Now we're gonna talk about five steps towards your GOAT portfolio. How many of us know what GOAT is? <laughs> yeah, greatest of all time, so we need, now these are some skills that a lot of us know, but we just have to be reminded of. Because when I was a student, I used to, you know, um, show my work to my mentors. I used to ask so many questions. And whatever they used to tell me, in the back of my mind, I used to be like, these points make sense. I mean, it's just that we need someone to constantly remind us that these are some, you know, key points that we need to adhere to, right? Okay, so the first one being 
All killers, no fillers. We're looking at your best works. We're talking about your top 10 projects that you've done out of the 20 you might have done in the course of your time, right? A lot of students come to me and they're like, so we've done um, 20 projects. And do we put all, do we upload all 20 projects in our portfolio? Now I tell them, always read the guidelines of the university you're applying for. A lot of universities, they give a minimum amount or the minimum number of portfolio or like the pieces that they're trying to ask you to send. However, a lot of universities, they don't give you a set number of projects. They tell you just upload or adhere to the guidelines and upload your best works. So of course, it varies from university to university, but make sure you're putting forth your best works because that matters. Now we're talking about ability to design. Now what that means is we want to see your ability to design. Now you might have done a project with your team, like a team project, because sometimes design is not a one man's job. What, even when you go in the industry, when you start working, you work in a team. You might be a graphic designer, but it's in a team, right? So we're not telling don't upload that project, but do give credits, give citation. We'll talk about that in the next step. The fourth is range and variation. Now, um, you might be applying for animation, but you are skeptical if you want to show other skills in your portfolio or not. Do incorporate a few ranges of skills in your portfolio. Don't limit yourselves to only one or two kinds of projects. Kind of, just write it down, make notes. That's what I did when I was compiling my portfolio. I did it for um, marketing and management, but um, I had some design projects too. Now design thinking is also one of, I mean, it's, it's one of the very critical skills that a manager should have. Now how would I do that? I would just create a marketing plan and I would upload that as well. So just make sure you're writing down all the skills that you can you know, show and portray in the portfolio that you're uploading. Step number two, tell your story. We want to know your role, your process, and your brand, okay? So what's your role? Now this is a great example where you can see the student has you know, started with the sketches and shown the final product. But if you see and focus in the center, you can see that the uh, student has given credits and said that this work was a group effort. So we exactly know what he's done or what they've done. We want to see what you've designed. What's your ability? Right? I mean, you can upload the group effort, but what have you done in the group? That's very important for you to mention. Now we want to know your process. How did that line drawing come to life with animation or with that graphic? So a lot of students sometimes also ask me that, if we show um, the process, our PDF or the file will be too long. What if we start with page one, we end up on page seven, but we're still on one product. Find creative ways to show the process. For example, this one, I really love this example. So the SCAD student really find that, you know, different means of kind of show the process from beginning to end. So kind of explore different, um, I would say, applications that are there. There's so many applications that are out there which you can capitalize on and find ways to portray and show your process. Behind a great design, there are plenty of explorations. How many of us just come to one design and that's it? None of us. We've done like hundreds of explorations, right? In order to come to that one final pro uh, product or design that we want to send to our clients or our school projects, we do multiple explorations. So do upload and incorporate that as well because that shows your design thinking, your critical skills where you kind of navigated your way to that one project or yeah, that one final um, product. 
Now, necessarily, it does not have to be for all five or 10 projects you add. Do it for the ones you really feel that, that you drastically made a difference to. Right? So obviously, like kind of, again, map it out. Get attached to your work. This is another thing that I want to talk about. A lot of us, we get attached to our works. Like when I did my undergraduation, in my first year, I created a very basic garment. But I, was, I would always incorporate that in my portfolio because I was like, this is my first ever design and I want to incorporate that. Whereas when I came to my fourth year, my skills had changed drastically. So it made a difference. I could not see that. But of course, I mean, this topic, we'll come back to it later. But you know, I just wanted to share that bit that do put explorations. Do put explorations. Your brand. What is your factor? Now, um, for example, think about um, Apple. Now, if you don't see the device, you see the interface, you see the iOS, you know it's Apple, isn't it? OK. Fashion, think about Masaba. You see the designs. From afar, you can tell it's Masaba. Think about McDonald's. You see yellow stripes with red. You know that that's McDonald's branding. So what's your essence? What's your factor in projects where the faculty or the reviewer can tell that, hey, that's Pallavi's work. But five days later, they come back and see another work and say, hey, I think that's Pallavi's work because we saw it five, five days before. So what's that one factor or one element you want to add in your work for it to be known for, that it's you? Now let's take this example. That's Tanya Kerr's work. She's also a SCAD alum. Now you can see, now these are four different works that she did. But if you put it together, it looks like a storyboard. It looks that it's flowing from point A to point B to point C. So she has that quirky color factor that she adds to her designs. So know your factor, know your design element. You don't have to necessarily know it on day one. You will only know it once you start compiling and presenting your portfolio. Another great example of a student who plays with these light and dark color contrast images. Now these are four different works, but if you put it together, we know it's a story. It's done by one student. Another work where we can see the student has played with lines. Whatever work is done, we see that play with lines together. Step three, the big picture. Whenever we're compiling a portfolio, we look at projects. But ha have we thought that it's one? When you submit a portfolio, it's a story. It's one. Think of it, OK, so think that this is your portfolio. And the projects are in the middle. So the projects are a, like they're puzzle pieces of a very big picture. So always look at the bigger picture. And don't forget that your like your small projects are part of a huge big portfolio that you're going to be uploading. So never forget that. Always see the big picture by looking at your work with a critical eye. We always, once you're done compiling your portfolio, portfolio, make sure you come back and see it as a big picture. Does it look, look like one? Is there a flow? And if there's a flow, then what is your element in that flow? So make sure you come back and see the big picture after compiling your portfolio. Number four, opinions matter. Now I'm going to come back to my story where I created my design and I always used to upload that in my portfolio. My professor told me that, why are you putting this project? I told him because I love it. Look at the garment. It's the first time I ever designed anything. I've ever used a machine. And they told me, they showed me myself. I was stunned the progression I made. In year four, I could create a complicated bag. I did some furnitures. And they're like, you still want to put that? I had to let it go. Because of course, this is me. I saw it on my, like, I saw it firsthand. So sometimes, when you show your work, when you get feedback, it matters. 
It works a lot, believe me. So always get opinions from your mentors, take risks, get it from um, your family, your friends. Think about it as an art gallery, right? So most of the universities, you'll be uploading portfolios. So in an art gallery, if you're showing your work, you're not there to talk to the audience. All they have is a little description. Now they can perceive your work in however way they want it to perceive it, right? So kind of get, get feedbacks from your family, friends, because they don't know your work. You know your work better than anyone. So they can actually see, just, just show them the work, don't say anything, and let them perceive it. So you'll actually know what the other person who is going to examine your portfolio, how they would perceive it. Now point five, you have to ace your presentation. Tailor your work. Create one portfolio, but keep tailoring it for your audience. What might work for University A might not work for University B. Do read the guidelines because a lot of universities, they want your portfolio to be tailored in a way if you're applying for a specific program. So think of it as, sure, your portfolio is one as a whole, but then again, you need to tailor it according to the university you're applying for. Because what might work for, sure, one university might not work for another. For another. But in a way, your portfolio, if you're creating it for the university, it might not work for a job because they have specific requirements. So wherever you upload your portfolio, be it for a university or for your work, make sure you tailor it. Get organized. We've spoken about this, that you know, organization, again, it's not hard and fast rule that you have to categorize your work according to the genre. It could be according to your progression too. But also incorporate your best works and be true to yourself. Because we want to see your element in the portfolio. Now, these are some basic guideline overview that I want to go through. Most of these guidelines, I'm sure we all know, we just want to be reminded of. We're uploading portfolio digitally. Like how I said that most of the universities would want you to upload your portfolio digitally. So make sure you're doing research as to what university, which university uses what platform. Like for SCAD, we use um, Slide Room. So other universities might use other platforms too. When you're uploading digitally, make sure the photos, the images, they're high resolution. They're oriented properly, cropped, rotated, exactly how you want it to be seen. And add a brief description. Like how I said, you know, think about it as an art gallery. Take away this one point from this presentation that if you're submitting your portfolio, you cannot tell them what you're showing. So make sure that you add like a little description as to where you draw the inspiration from, or where or what medium you use if it's a painting. So that's the last brief. Now things to avoid while you're presenting your portfolio or you're compiling your portfolio. Plagiarism. Sometimes we get involved in plagiarism without even knowing. So do not forget to give credits or cite your work if you get inspiration from any of the pop references or anything from the internet. Make sure you're give, giving, cite, uh, giving citations and credits. That's very important. Do not submit incomplete work. A lot of students, what they do is they submit work that is work in progress. We want to see your work, but we want to see your final work. So don't submit your incomplete work. Avoid cliches. Put the best pieces that you've got. Put the ones that you feel are true to you and your brand identity. Avoid reflections, shadows, binderings, line papers, these little things that sometimes we forget or ignore while compiling a portfolio. So avoid those. Now these are a few things that I really want all of you to take away from this presentation. Make your portfolio count, okay? Have a clear communication with all the works that you submit. Look at the bigger picture, think big. 
Embrace feedback. Definitely get feedback from your mentors because they're your greatest strength. And put in your best foot forward, your best work forward. Thank you.